First of all, I did want to thank you. Uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you, Kathleen, and everyone supporting them for this event. Uh, it is my first time being here, and it's, uh, it's phenomenal to be able to, uh, to meet all of you from a networking standpoint, exchanging information, getting, getting uh, perspective and views uh, from uh, other, uh, call that hyperloopers or hyperloopians. I don't know. Uh, Martin, I think you're going to take an action to come up with a name for, for us here. But... Uh, I'll put, there we go, there we go, that works, for next year. So uh, I'm really pumped and excited to be here, be able to meet all of you and then uh, give you a few updates uh, of, of, uh, of where we are. So um, on that note, I'm here to, uh, to talk to you about the, the journey that we've been going through at the Virgin uh, Hyperloop, right? So as uh, Martin said, I'm the Vice President of Engineering and Technology at Virgin Hyperloop. We're located in Los Angeles, California. We have a test facility in Las Vegas, and I'll talk a little bit about it during my, uh, my presentation here. And uh, here I'll brief you um, on the journey we've been taking to go from, from uh, a technology to developing a product. And then I put here exhilarating, uh, practical, uh, and I think there's many other words that can be described in what it takes to turn a technology into actual a product, uh, a product that works and that performs. And um, in order to, to do this, what you got to do is go through some transition, and our company has gone through a lot of those lately, and uh, and that's why I'm going to go through uh, through this uh, with you and take you on that on that journey with us. Um, so let's start with the technology. So about six years ago, and, and I apologize if some of you already know this, but I think it's a good uh, good refresher here. About six years ago, uh, we started developing our technology at our facility in Las Vegas, uh, in the middle of the desert. Uh, not much going on there. And um, we started with a test called a POT test. It's propulsion uh, open air test, right? The objective here was mainly to uh, validate and demonstrate uh, some of the electromagnetic uh, propulsion system. We did that successfully, um, which allowed us to move on to the next stage about two years later, uh, develop a test track. Uh, it's about 500 meters long. Uh, it's uh, uh, a, a tube about uh, slightly north of three meters in diameter and are capable of holding actual vacuum, right? So we achieved that a vacuum or near vacuum uh, without getting too technical here, right? Making it one of the largest uh, vacuum, uh, one of the largest vacuum chambers in the world. So um, we, we did a bunch of tests in there, got some vehicles moving north of 380 kilometers per hour, right? So a lot of really successful tests and demonstration of technology. So all of this to say that we continue to mature our technology. And then two years later, um, we blazed the trail by putting actually people on some of these vehicles within that too, right? So that was a phenomenal achievement. Um, something that came with a lot of, as you can imagine, the technology is going to be at a level of maturity that allows us to do this, right? Uh, but something that we also had to do is work a lot on, on the safety piece, right? In order to get people in there, we had to go through independent safety assessment and to have to do a lot of thinking about technology and how it impacts, uh, impacts put, putting people in there, right? So that, that journey was not easy. Uh, we managed to get, to get some of these, uh, these tests done um, uh, very successfully, but we did a lot of learning also through, through this process, okay? And one thing that came um, pretty obvious to us is that Put in persons in the pod, right? And I'll get, a, I'll, I'll talk about the vision in, in, in a little bit, but putting person in the pod is not an easy feat, right? It's a high complexity system and what we call a low maturity hyperloop ecosystem. And I'll talk, I'll explain a little bit what I mean by this. So high complexity is, I, I talked earlier about making sure that the, the technology is, is mature enough and proven to be able to put people in there, right? Robust, reliable, and so forth. Low maturity is that the, the, if you look at the Hyperloop ecosystem right now, we have a lot, we have a lot to learn and a lot to do, right? And I think some people mentioned, you know, the, the decades even faster. There's a lot to do in a really short period of time. And I would qualify this for many other, any other standard in any kind of other industry as a low maturity state of where we are, right? I think we'll have to admit this. Um, from a supply chain standpoint, so what I mean by supply chain is, is um, um, industrial partners that we have to work with, that have to get familiar with the technology, whether it's infrastructure, vehicle components, or vehicle building. 
There's also a not clear need and a defined market need, right, that we need to go after. There are certain, many industries with a higher maturity where you know exactly the customer know what they want. We, we, we know what's going on out there. Here, we are just searching uh, ourselves for what, what is the need in the market? What is it specifically uh, uh, that customers are looking for? And then the, the achievement at, uh, at our facility in DevLoop, right, that, that, that track that I mentioned, um, amazing achievement, but clearly was not built for any commercial use, okay? So we looked at the transition. So how do we go? Because we talked about moving fast. We talked about uh, taking some steps in order to get there, right? Uh, keeping the vision in mind in order to get to, to an end, you usually get to, get to follow some steps to get there. So we look at a transition to say, okay, what does it look like to, to go from our technology and make it an actual product, right? How do we go from a, a high complexity, a low maturity, to something that we can achieve fast, quickly, what we call a lower complexity with, with leveraging higher maturity, right? So, so what does this mean? It means building a, a, a product that's reliable and robust, of course, right? Um, looking for customer problems and attempting to solve them with the product, right? Um, leveraging maturity in our industrial partners where they exist, okay? And of course, focusing on the cost. And I'll talk a little bit about this and the cost of operation, right? Um, so the transition for the business and the mindset, what did it mean to Virgin Hyperloop and, 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 and its employees? Is that, is that mean that we were talking a lot about the dream and the vision all the time, right? And we still talk about it, it's still there, right? I'll talk a little bit about it in, in a minute. But also, we talk now about customers. What does a customer in the market actually want, right? And what does a product look like in answer to answer those needs and, and answer the needs from these customers as quickly as possible? So what do we do to lead today? We lead from, we retain the vision, we know where we wanna go, right? But we have clear steps and very precise about what is it gonna to take to execute those things. So what does it mean on a daily basis at Hyperloop, right? If you were to come visit us and, and see what the team is doing, what matters to us? We talk about infrastructure, but we talk about the cost of infrastructure, the scalability on the infrastructure, the deployability of the infrastructure. Not just it has to work. Of course it has to work. The technology has to be there, right? And we still have some work to do on this. I think everyone can acknowledge this, but where, how, how do we make this infrastructure that it's, it's, uh, it's cost effective? We gotta talk about vehicle performance. Beyond just the speed, okay. Um, well, I'll talk later about our position and in, 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 uh, everyone's aware that we're looking at focusing on, on freight and cargo today. But the vehicle performance, when any logistician in the room here or anyone in the logistics domain will know that we need to look at serviceability, we need to look at throughput, right? We need to look at utilization load factors, OPEX, the cost of operation and all these things. And those are, those are uh, discussions that needs to happen on a daily basis when, you, when you're going from a technology to a product. Um, the product we're looking at at Virgin Hyperloop is, is autonomous, on demand, and then something that can enable digitization of the logistic domain, right? Something that we see very important. Um, we're doing this obviously by, uh, we want to partner with uh, um, well, select industry partners in order to get there um, as part of our strategy. So we are as a company today, we get engineering, right? And as engineers, I'm an engineer, we do is we, we, we bring solutions to the table, but the solution for a problem that exists. So we talk about engineering, we talk about customer, we solve a, a customer problems, and then we talk about investors, right? Uh, and we do this by enhancing the value of what we bring to the table. So um, before I bring, I, I kind of wrap it all up here and I bring conclusion in a few words. Um, I, I do want to thank again, Martin, for, for, for putting this together. Uh, I can't wait to see what other, uh, other folks have to say today during their presentation. I think the master classes are going to be fascinating. We have a few panels going on, I think, uh, from passenger and also to, uh, to freight and cargo later. So uh, fantastic opportunity. And, and I would like you to leave with a few, a few notes uh, coming from the Virgin Hyperloop team here. First of all, um, we're early in the stages, yeah, we gotta move fast, but this market is opportunity is huge. It's big, okay? So there is room, there is room for everyone here, right? And in order for us to get there, we gotta, we gotta be what we call the good stewards of the industry, right? We gotta partner, right? Now these exchanges are invaluable because that's exactly what we wanna do here. Uh, understanding what everyone's doing and exchange uh, things because as a team, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to, to win, right? Um, I think we ought to clarify 
and remove any confusion that goes out there. Um, I, I'm a big into execution. I talked about leading by execution. Is the more we create fog and, and the lack of direction, the harder it is it will be for us as a as a hyperloop team to bring this as a reality. And I think everyone that's what everyone is here to do, right? Bring this as a reality. And then uh, what's the point of all of this is instill confidence in the rest of the world that it is not easy to actually develop the hyperloop uh, from a technology standpoint. I think I, I think I can uh, definitely. Uh, uh, bring information there. Uh, I, I wouldn't be the, the only one saying that there's a, there are a lot of technical challenges to get there. Uh, I do believe we can do this. It is a reality. Uh, it is going to happen and that uh, make everyone understand that the value that the Hyperloop can bring to uh, the rest of the industry and the world is, uh, is tremendous. Thank you. Thank you.